Morning, everyone. Actually, afternoon for me. Uh, uh, welcome to the free Tuesday trainings that we have every week. Uh, I'm Boyd Peterson. I'm going to be teaching today's class about getting awesome testimonials, reviews, uh, and getting more referrals is what this is all about. Now, I'm not going to be talking about as much of the referrals today as I am going to be talking about uh, getting those uh, great testimonials and reviews. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and let's get going. And you can uh, hang out and let me know if you have any questions. Um, so thank you. And it should be coming up any moment now. Thank you. Um, today, uh, what we're going to, as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about the reviews and testimonials. Uh, this presentation also has referrals, but we're going to be cutting it short because, well, it's a, a little bit of a long one. So we're going to go on. So one of the things you get, one, one of the things that happens when you get great testimonials and reviews, and I'll explain the difference, the more you get, the more business you will have. And that uh, is a great thing. Now, here's the pieces of the puzzle. Testimonials and internet reviews is all about reputation management. Why should your local business care about reputation management? It is the most important thing that'll help get people to you the, nowadays. Um, and the reason why is that there's more and more people on uh, the social media checking you out. Now, testimonials, getting and using them. It is said that the word of mouth is the best form of advertising. It is. But testimonial marketing allows you to spread the message instead of waiting for your customers to do it. When someone says something to you that would be considered a testimonial, I always say, hey, can I quote you on that? And then you write it down and then have them approve it. This is very important. You want to make sure that you get that uh, approved by them. And so please do that. Now, the difference between a testimonial and, and, a, uh, uh, and a review is that a testimonial is generally somebody who tells you something or sends you a letter, where a review is they're putting it on somewhere on the internet that is going to actually uh, show that you have reviews. And we'll talk more about each of those in a few minutes. So the next thing we have is uh, you can ask for a testimonial uh, if they don't volunteer it for it, and you can do a survey and ask an open-ended question at the end. Now, there are five types of people who give, uh, who are, uh, will give reviews, okay? You've got the satisfied one, you did a great job, they, they will probably use you again, is the first one. The second one is, it's much more about loyalty. They will use you every time they can, and they will tell others as the subject is brought up. Uh, there's the evangelical. They will tell their friends and will give examples of how great you are. And they are exuberant about uh, giving you giving their friends and, and family uh, information about what you do. Now, there is also, and this is the one that you want most of, you want some fanatical ones. Although this takes some time and building a great relationship. They will tell their friends about you all the time. They feel that you are more than just friends, and it shows when you are uh, when anyone is talking to you, talking to them about your business. Uh, you feel like your family. There is one other type, and this is the most dangerous of all. It is the unsatisfied, and uh, they can be fanatical in damaging your business. Now. That's an important uh, under, thing to understand is you, you've got all these different ones and you've got to keep your customers at least on the top four. And we recommend getting them to being loyal, evangelical, and fanatical. Uh, but if they're unsatisfied, there's something that's going on. We'll talk about some of those toward the end of this presentation. Now, there's all kinds of different testimonials and reviews. Uh, here's a big, long list. I'm not going to read them all to you. But if you'd like more information on each one of these, I can uh, get that to you. Uh, or you can call me and we'll do a one-to-one. -one. I'd love to do a one-to-one -one with you on this. I'll give you my email at the end and you can uh, email me and we can set up to do that. But uh, let's go ahead and get figure out uh, what it makes a good testimonial. Now, if somebody says your service was great, 
it's not a really great testimonial. Now, if they say, I saved over $200 on these tires over your competitor that says he buys in bigger quantities, that's a great testimonial. The key here is, you, if the, you can say, I would hope so behind it, then it is a uh, platitude rather than a testimonial. Uh, you went out of your way to help me. Well, I hope so. Yes. But when they tell a story, you can't put that. Not only did you drop me off when I needed to get back to the office, you picked me back up when my car was done. This is a great testimonial. I recommend you to uh, my friends. Now, here's what you do is ask them why when they say that. Anytime you hear those uh, ones that are platitudes, ask them why. And uh, you, you, if by asking more about those platitudes, it will get them to telling the story of why you are so good. By the way, by doing that, it helps move them up the ladder a little bit of what they are going to be saying about you. And that's an important thing because as you start asking them, well, why? They then in their mind start telling the story and they'll remember the story longer than you will probably. So be sure to ask them when they're giving you, oh, your service was great. I was at a, a, a store one time and uh, the lady says, oh, thank you for uh, being such a great uh, person behind the cash register and the person simply said well thank you what why do you say that and she then went on to say how there sometimes she gets these people that are behind the cash register who just simply are all transactional they don't want to talk to them they don't want to say thank you they don't want to say please they don't want to you know they just are there to serve people well it, it turned into a really good testimonial or internet review Okay. All right. Well, let's talk about these internet reviews. It is how people find businesses. It's changing and mobile is where everything is going. Uh, internet reviews are actually 88%, sorry, 68% of the time people are looking for something. They're looking on their phones to uh, check the reviews about your business. If you don't believe me, uh, you can start asking people, where do you find out about a new business? How do you determine if it's one you want to go to? It is important for you to find, get those reviews. Um, and it's important to get listed on the internet sites and the review internet reviews places. Now there's lots of places you can go uh, to do that. But let me tell you this last thing here, 88% of consumers trust online reviews as much as a personal recommendation, that is very strong very strong. Now, here's uh, one example of it. You know, there's a couple of uh, or three different uh, reviews in there, and it is really a, a strong thing for them. Now, if you're uh, a restaurant, uh, where you put them is going to be uh, important to know. Now, I, I said Google Plus on here. I meant to put Google My Business on here. That is a good one. You need to have them on Google My Business. In fact, I'll tell you in a minute about uh, why it is so important. Yelp for some industries is important. Facebook is important for all industries. And again, I'll tell you why in a few minutes. TripAdvisor for some industries, Zagat, uh, Urban Spoon, Golden Spoon, local media sites, industry specific sites, community sites, and then of course your own website. These are all places you should have it. But let me tell you, there are two that you want to have your customers make sure that they give you a review on, and that's Google My Business and Facebook. The reason why is Google, uh, the search engine side of Google, looks at your Google My Business and Facebook as legitimate internet reviews. Now, what does that mean? So, Google and Facebook require you to sign in and put your name to it. All of these others may or may not. Uh, I know that Yelp does not. Um, TripAdvisor does not. Zagat does not. So you can leave a review for somebody and you don't have any recourse to say that person's never been to my business before. Well, that's one of the things you want to get uh, because Google uh, will pay attention to Google My Business 
and Facebook reviews, and that's it. Uh, now, on Facebook, there's also recommendations. They are not the same. They are like what you get with Yelp. That you don't have, it's not someone signing in and saying, I trust them. It's them holding their hand up and saying, I think they're doing a great job. Now, one of the other things to do, though, is take those that are on your review pages and put them on your own website. Make sure you post the ones that have the best story on your website. This helps build your brand and it helps build it in uh, to through Google as well. When Google sees that you're putting the reviews on there, it's one of the only times they love that you are duplicating uh, content on the internet. Uh, because when you put uh, great testimonials or reviews that were on Google My Business or Facebook and you put it on your website, they say, oh yes, they are utilizing the right services and they are telling the true story. Now, be careful when you put them on there. Now, some can be really long. Be sure to try to keep them all so that they're as much of the right, you know, that you don't want to take bits and pieces and just uh, piece it together to say the, what you wanted to say. You've got to keep it going in a, in a logical order that Google recognizes. And that's a good thing. Now, here's what Google encourages you to do. Encourage reviews for your business. Okay, you remind your customers to leave feedback on Google. Simply reminding customers, it's quick, easy. Leave, you know, I have some customers who they make up a business card that has both the Google and the uh, Facebook reviews on it on how to get to their uh, review area. And it makes it easy for people to do. Now, uh, people will leave the feedback on their mobile phones and their desktop. So be sure to make sure you give them something that will help them. Now, if you if it uh, be if they're leaving you reviews, you need to go and make sure you're responding to those reviews. Now, don't just say you know they give you a, a, a six line review and they're telling the story of how wonderful you are. Don't just simply say thank you. R tell back the story of what you remember from them. Um, we had a customer who did this and uh, he had a, a virtual reality place and uh, they were having a birthday party and they had from grandma in a wheelchair all the way down to a, uh, an 11 year old. Well, the 11 year old was who asked to go there once, uh, but they got the grandma playing a game on there and she was having a great time. Well, they wrote a review and they said, oh, how wonderful it was that that you even got grandma involved with this. We didn't think that she would do, uh, be doing anything but watching her grandson. Well, he did. they did a lot more than that. The key here was the, the owner of it turned it back around and said, it was so cool to have your grandma in there. And she loved it, yes. And, you know, we find so many people who love this and, and tell them how much you appreciated having them come to his store and have this uh, experience. It led to more birthday parties being brought there and families were willing to bring others to it. Now make sure that your, your business is verified through Google My, uh, Google My Business pages. Um, you need to make sure that's done. Now, why should you encourage Google reviews? I've actually already told about this uh, because it is verified. Uh, and if you have your Google My Business account going and somebody searches for you, when they click on you, they can see the Google Maps and they'll see the reviews, the top reviews that you have. Uh, Google reviews will help you search uh, in the search results and they will also help you show up on a separate page connection for your web page. So you want to do that as much as possible. Do the same thing for Facebook because it works the same for that. Now, how do you get them? This is one of the one, things that I get asked all the time. How do you get them? Well, the first one is just simply ask them to uh, before they leave your office or before you leave their uh, home or whatever it might be, ask them to leave you a great review. 
uh, give them a card. Uh, as I mentioned before, I have a customer who has business cards. And on one side is his information. On the other side is how to leave reviews for him and how to look up reviews that are on them. Uh, I know another customer who sends a reminder card or a reminder email. And in fact, that's what the next thing is. Um, and then, of course, always put a link on your website, but also in your emails. If you do that, you're going to get people that will say, oh, yeah, I need to do that. And especially if you have an email newsletter, sit, put them in that and let people know that you would really appreciate them giving you a, rev a review. Make it easy for them to get to it by making that link, hot, a hot link on both your website and your emails, uh, because it is so uh, easy to do, but it also makes it so that they're, it's easy for the customer to get right to where you want it to be. Now, of course, you can use a service that contracts uh, or contacts and reminds customers that have just been into your business. Now, there are several types of services. There's some that you can actually do in the background. You put their information in and then it sends out the request. And then it's, uh, it keeps track of them. If they don't uh, read it or they don't click on it, then it'll send it again. And it, so it reminds them two or three times. You set it up how many times you want it. I know of another service, they just simply uh, call everybody and say, hey, I'm calling from so-and-so's dental office. I'm just making sure everything went right. Now, of course, they're saying, yes, 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 it was great. Can you leave us a review? And sometimes the person says, well, I'm a little too busy, or uh, can you send me something? And they send them out an email to remind them and to give them the direct link. Now, you can also send a form for them to fill out. I've seen this uh, a couple of times where you send them an email that has the form on it, they fill it out, and it immediately it goes to Google, logs in, they have to log in, that's the key, and then it'll post it to them. Um, I personally like uh, some of these earlier ones than the latter ones, although we use a service that does this as well, does the reminder through email. Now, what happens if the review isn't as good as you want it? This is important to take care of, okay? So you need to respond immediately, verify their concerns and make changes to fix the problem. You want to be communicating with them and you want to be authentic. You want to be trustworthy. You want to make it so it's a recent thing because you don't want to wait for several weeks before you're responding to it. In fact, I always tell people you should be checking your Google My Business account and your Facebook account at least once a week on the review section, okay? Be relevant when you uh, talk to them. Now, here's the thing. I'll tell you a good story about this. I have a, a client who is a uh, printer here in the Salt Lake City area. He called me up one time and he says, boy, and I got this terrible review from one of our best customers. I don't understand what happened. And I said, well, have you called them yet? No, 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 I haven't. I, I don't know what to tell them. And I says, let's get on the call together and let's ask them what happened. Well, that's what we did. We got on the call. I asked them, uh, so what happened? And as we got going along, it came out that when the lady walked in, she was kind of in a hurry, but the person that was at the receptionist desk was on the phone. So she was being patient. Well, the girl, uh, rose one finger to kind of say, just a minute. After five times of this, she finally got off the phone. She was on the phone with a friend setting up what they were going to do tonight together. Well, this isn't good customer service. And, and but the, the girl there, she said, okay, sorry about that. Uh, just uh, my friend, we haven't talked in a long time. She went and got the order, brought it back. It was all done well. It was all about the customer service. So we said, can we uh, fix this and have you test her again? And she said, certainly. So now uh, the owner of the business had his business coach who helps train his people come in and they talked to this receptionist. Now she'd only been there a couple of weeks at that point. She hadn't been uh, trained on how 
this customer wanted his uh, receptionist to answer the phone, how they wanted her to uh, take care of the customers in front of them, all of these kind of things. So they went through and did all of the things and they, they uh, made sure that everything was uh, taken care of. Then they called the customer and they said, hey, we're going to give you a free set of business cards that are, are super deluxe ones that are, you know, are the thick uh, ones with you know, foil and all kinds of other things on it. And will you be willing to do this with us? And she said, sure. Well, when she came in, she was treated like royalty. She and she felt that she felt that this person had raised the bar considerably. So she went back to the review that she had given and she revised it and told people, I originally gave them a bad review, but they called me. They took care of my problems. They really fixed everything. They trained the person who had uh, treated me with less uh, respect than I had expected. And uh, the customer service has been taking uh, raised to a new level for me. I recommend people go and work with these people. This review has brought them more business than all the five star reviews they've had, because it's all about how you take care of a customer when something goes wrong. And people love to hear that. They love to know that you do listen to them, that you are really a person that is going to take care of your customers, okay? So it's important to do that. Um, and so that's what happened. Uh, what should you not do? Well, you should not ignore them. You should not say disparaging remarks about the customer and never ever make up uh, or pay someone to write reviews. Oh boy, this is a big one. I had a customer uh, a few years ago who was an auto body or an auto repair shop, and he uh, called me and says, "Hey, I got a whole bunch of reviews. I'm so happy. It's bringing me in a lot of business." A few days later, he got shut off of Google, and he calls me. He says, "What happened?" And I'm looking at it, and I'm looking at, I'm going into his back end, and they shut off his Google My Business account because he had reviews that could not have possibly been reviews from actual customers. And he says, well, how would they know? And I said, well, almost all of these are from uh, Taiwan, India, Singapore. Hmm. You know, I don't think they would have driven their car to see you and have work done on your car. That's the problem. You pay somebody to write you some reviews and it's going to backfire. When they when Google sees a whole bunch of reviews coming in all at once that are from, and they can see where they're coming from, then this is a problem. And they shut off his account for over a year and they finally opened it back up and he has learned his lesson. So now he just simply asks his customers to give him the reviews. Something that I had been telling him to do all along. And he was too busy, he said, to get those reviews because he kept forgetting to hand out the business card. He forgot to, uh, to ask them, will you give me a review? No. Don't use language uh, or use language to explain what happened. Uh, you know, and, and don't lie. So the key is, don't try to make excuses. That's what this, that uh, fourth one is. Don't make excuses. Say, let me see what I can do to fix this problem. I don't want it to happen to you again. And I don't want it to happen to other customers. And of course, don't lie. Don't also run down whoever they're telling about having the problem. Now, no matter what it is, do not go to the negative side of things. That is important, okay? Now, the big question is, do you have a plan? And you've got to have a plan. Now, I'm going to tell you something else that is a, a good thing to know. And that is there are times when there are uh, reviews that you get that you can challenge and Google on Facebook will take them off of your account, okay? For example, 
I had a customer who called me and he says, I've got this bad review on here. It's one of our ex-employees and he's never used us as a service. He's just disparaging us because we fired him because he stopped coming to work. So I said, well, just get a hold of Google because it was on a Google thing and let them know that he was an employee that's disgruntled because you let him go because he stopped coming to work. They did. Well, Google goes and verifies this. And then when they see that he's never been a customer, they take that and will remove it. There's a couple of other times that the same type of thing happened. So like I, there was a coffee shop I was working with and they got this really scathing, terrible one-star review. In fact, the guy said, if I could give you a zero-star review, I would, but they want me to put at least one star. He was talking about somebody with the same name of this coffee shop that's in Maine, not Utah. And uh, because he, he got a hold of the guy and said, what, why are you doing this? And the guy just simply said, look, if you've got the same name, you're probably just as bad. So they ended up sending over to, uh, uh, in that case, it was Facebook. They went out, sent over to Facebook and within two weeks, it was gone. You, you've got to be a legitimate customer. Another one that we've seen is that uh, a, a pushy salesperson, Remember that uh, uh, guy, the, the printing guy I was telling you about? He called me one time and he says, I got this terrible review and I don't even know who this person is. As we got looking through it, it turns out that there was this guy calling the uh, owner of the business every week, trying to get him to switch to their software for running their shop. Well, he told him no, and he kept telling him no. And finally he says, look, I've told you no, I don't want to hear from you anymore. And he hung up. Well, and the review said, this, this uh, person, he just won't listen to any problems that he has. He will not, and he just went on and on. And, and he talked about, he even hung up on me. You know, how dare him hang up on one of his customers? He wasn't a customer. He was a salesperson. Well, they got a hold of Google about this. And funny enough, this same person had been doing this for a lot of different people that were in the printing industry. So he was using it over their heads sometimes, say, hey, I'll take that off if you'll, uh, you'll buy my software. Well, Google shut him down from ever being able to post reviews again. And they took it, of course, off. Uh, another one is when there is a uh, mistaken identity, kind of like the uh, first one, but uh, if you can prove that they've never been your customer, you can get them removed. And that's one of the best things you can do. Uh, so there are times when you can get those type of reviews off when you're going, I don't understand that. I had a dentist that had that kind of a review one time and he's going, I've never heard of this guy. So uh, they just simply contacted the, the uh, whether it be Facebook or, uh, or Google My Business, and they got that re, uh, resolved. Now, here's the thing. This is why it's important to use Google and My Business and Facebook. They both verify. Now, if the customer says, I am a, 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 a true customer, then they ask them, send us so a receipt, an invoice, anything that shows, even a bank statement that shows that you bought something from them. And if they can't produce it within 10 days, they assume that they were that you, the business owner, is right and they're not really your customer. And they'll remove it and they can remove it. Now there's others, and I won't mention the names of them, but there's a lot of them out there that actually use negative reviews to force you into trying to, or using their service. And sometimes the service is $500 a month so that they'll move a bad review down out or they'll remove it. Funny enough, usually the bad reviews are not from one of your customers, it's from somebody else. And they refuse to remove it because they don't know who it is or, don't, or they're saying they don't know who it is. 
And uh, there's a business tactic that is going on with one big company. And uh, so be careful with that and uh, make sure that you uh, just simply take care of those when you get a bad review. Now, how do you get more reviews? I've mentioned some of it. Every per salesperson has heard about how word of mouth is the best advertising. Uh, the only problem is customers don't tell their friends fast enough to keep you in business. So ask for the referrals. It's a great way of doing it. And there are three, uh, there are just three problems that people have. They are so afraid, uh, you know, they forget to ask them. It's scary to ask them or customers don't want to give them. Now, these are referrals, not internet reviews. So you, but you, if you set it up correctly, you can do some really good things with this. I have a customer that I had when I ran the uh, community newspapers that I had a program where if for every re referral they gave me that signed up for a six month contract with us, we would then give her a free ad. Now she was a, a jewelry store. And so we ended up for, when we instituted that, she took advantage of that every single month. Every single month, we got one new customer from her, like clockwork. After three years, we had 36 new customers. Many of them lasted all those that time and beyond. But here's the thing. She got free ads for it. And it, it worked out for her. Now, she was the business owner. Sometimes you can't do quite that with a, someone who is not the business owner, but is in charge of it or could give you referrals. So set up a referral program. It's a really good thing to do. And also give them something that will allow them to remember to or a card that says, hey, I love going to XYZ company you will too, and have it so that they hand those out. Uh, so it's all about asking them. It's not scary. And want to bet your customers will give them. Now, there are sometimes people say, oh, I, oh, I won't give them. Give them the card and they can hand it out when they want to. And I have seen that work really well because they don't want to give you the name so you're pestering them, but they'll give the card to someone else who has a problem with their um, automobile. Say, oh, here's the per people I use here. And they'll give you $10 off on with this card or whatever it might be, okay? Uh, this is all about getting awesome testimonials, fabulous internet reviews, and some more referrals. It's so important to do that because the more you get of these, the more business you will have. Yeah, I wanna thank you. And I want you to leave me a review. Here is my review uh, addresses. You can see it right there. So just go to either my Google My Business or my Facebook review and leave me a review. I appreciate it today. I hope this was uh, beneficial for you. Uh, it's been a lot of fun to do these uh, ones. And come back next week. We'll have another one that you can uh, take advantage of. We're going to be talking about YouTube videos and how to get them to give you more business for your business. So thank you very much. And uh, we'll talk to you next week.